Oh, my absolute pleasure to bring on one of the great boxers of all time, a three-time heavyweight champ, 41-2, and two, Lennox Lewis, who is now a, a boxing analyst for Fox. Um, first of all, my mother is British, Lancashire, and uh, you're Canadian and British, and I, I never thought that um, until the end of your career... America appreciated you. By the way, you dealt with some of the same stuff in Great Britain. You can acknowledge that now. Did it bother you when you were piling up wins and knockouts, but you were a sophisticated, refined boxer? You didn't. <laughs> you, you weren't goofy at press conferences. You, you weren't. You weren't. Uh, you did everything well. You had a, 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 an improving jab, straight right hand. You were a straight up fighter. You weren't flashy. Did it bother you that people didn't get you? Yes, to a point, to a certain degree, because, you know, there's a lot of people doing different stuff out there, but I'm doing a lot of positive things. And, you know, it seemed like the public was more on the on the negative side when 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 a train crashed. It's like, oh, forget about what you're doing. I'm going to see this train crash. So uh, I didn't understand that um, as I was growing up, but I understand it more now. And I've always told people that I'm like fine wine. You know, my record and everything about me will get better in time. And it certainly did. You were you yes. were like an artist. You were more appreciated when you were leaving the sport. Yes. Of course, in 2002 in Memphis, we brought Memphis up for some reason earlier, Beale Street. Beale Street. Uh, you fought Mike Tyson. It was an yeah. eighth-round KO. I remember it. You stood in the ring, one of the few guys that never backed down. You heard him in the seventh. You knocked him down in the eighth. It was an interesting fight because a lot of people, Frank Bruno, the Brit, yeah. he, he hurt Mike. But while I was at that fight at the Hilton, and he was never comfortable. You were completely comfortable in the ring with Mike. Why was there no fear? And did you, did you, did you learn anything during the fight with Mike? Yeah. I, uh, okay, well, there was no fear because uh, I've got an extensive amateur career. Uh, two Olympics, and my amateur career is uh, big. Uh, the fact that, um, you know, I'm a late bloomer as well. You know, um, heavyweights more, you know, get old early, but I got older later. You got better later. Better later, sorry. Yes, you're right. So by the time you fought Tyson, you felt great. Oh, yeah, I felt great. I mean, he was my nemesis throughout my whole career type of thing. You know, when am I going to fight Tyson? When am I going to fight Tyson? You know, the fight had to happen. You know, when he went into incarceration, I was a bit concerned because, uh, you know, you know, every time you get your hair cut, the barbers or some argument in the barber um, uh, chair, oh, Tyson's the best, Holyfield's the best, Lewis is the best, but nobody's really seen us box together. So sure. it was very important for and me and styles Tyson. make fights, yes. and your style was different than Mike's. Oh, yeah. You told me before you went on, you figured Mike out during the fight. Yes. Well, I figured him out before the fight. All I did was watch the Buster Douglas fight, you know, do what Buster Douglas did, and hopefully, you know, everything should go work correctly. Use your length. Use my length. This is the first time that we actually, actually fought in a, a press conference. Uh, you know, as you can see, I was dressed not for a fight. I was dressed <laughs> for a press conference. <laughs> and Mike bit you. Yeah. Um, did you? Did that intimidate you, uh, bother you, infuriate you? How did it make you feel? It more infuriated me because, you know, we're gladiators and we fight. So to, to be on the stage and, you know, come at me and then, you know, we're, we're, I'm throwing punches at you and you want to bite me really, really bothered me. But... Uh, I remember biting somebody one time, but that was more out of desperation. He was choking me, so right. I bit him. When you fight Mike Tyson, he had a devastating left. But I thought post incarceration, he was not. He was a sloppier fighter. Uh, he gave up on the jab. He was going. He was a home run hitter who struck out a lot. Um, did you what? At what time during that fight? Because in the seventh, you heard him. Did you feel at what round, Lennox? This is my fight, and Mike knows it. Did yeah, you, you around, felt an edge. Yeah, and around the sixth round, around the sixth, seven round, um, you know, it, it, it was slowly uh, dwindling to a certain degree. He's, he didn't have as much gusto as in the first round, so he wasn't coming at me as strong. And, my, you know, my trainer, the late Emmanuel Stewart, yes. uh, bless his soul, um, you know, said to me that, you know, Mike Tyson fight would be my easiest fight. I didn't believe him, but... You know, it turned out as a good fight. It was a good fight. And, uh, you know, what shocked me about Mike Tyson is that he was able to take my punches. And uh, how I realized that I was hitting him, because this is the first time in my whole career that my hands swelled up. 
And that made me realize that I was hitting him. He was taking the punches, and, you know, he's a tough he's a tough guy. By the way, Holyfield, you fought him twice, draw, then you beat him. No, I actually beat him twice. Well, I know, but there's a draw. <laughs> but but um, similar to Tyson in size, you had a reach advantage and yes. a size advantage. But Holyfield had a chin. Holyfield was a fighting warrior, you know. He... Um, he figured out. He figured he did something very smart in uh, boxing me, and uh, you know it really came down to his movement and what he did uh, in the fight. So he boxed that fight as a. Actually, the second fight was this better fight than the first fight. The first fight, you know, he had no chance. Uh, I was winning the fight, but he did do some good stuff. But the second fight, he really came prepared. And the first fight, I couldn't understand. He came in the ring and he was singing. I'm like, this guy's coming in the ring singing. He doesn't realize uh, I'm the I'm the toughest guy he's ever gonna fight, so I, you know that re riled me up in the fight, and I said, okay, cool, I'm gonna do that. So I I came at him hard in the first fight, second fight now he came at me hard, but it it was to no avail, you know he still lost, but it, it, it was a who great, was, great who, warrior. Who, I always thought Holyfield's punch was stronger than people thought, and I thought he had a remarkable chin. Did you ever find a no name guy that gave you problems? Remember a guy named oh, yeah. Mitch Blood Green? I'm not sure if you oh, caught yeah. him. Mitch yeah. Blood Green was uh, no day at the... <laughs> he had all sorts of issues. <laughs> he did. But he was just a guy you didn't want any part of. You ever fight a guy that tagged you? Yeah. They, nobody knows, but tagged you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it would get me upset. I remember sparring a guy. He was like a light heavyweight. And every time he threw his jab, it, was, it would hurt. And he would, it, for, for some reason, it would, it would uh, feel like a, a two-by-four. And then I just got mad and start throwing some heavy punches. And then, you know, I didn't really. That was hurting me. A sparring guy. Yeah. So what do you make of these UFC uh, boxing? UFC guy to box a boxer on his home turf because a boxer only uses his hands this is a sport you only use your hands you have to be really good with your hands you know a UFC guy uses hands feet he chokes you he he, he, uh, he throws you to the ground he wrestles you all those different disciplines which you have to master them all now in boxing you master one now for a UFC guy to step into the ring and say oh I'm gonna throw punches for 12 rounds impossible he, he hasn't been training that way, and he hasn't been brought up that way. So When you would step in the ring, I was at four of your fights. I've, I've always said as a sportscaster, I was never nervous watching a sporting event except heavyweight fights where I would get butterflies in my stomach. When you are walking into that ring, it's incredible. I mean, it, I, it, I tell people all the time, it's better than Super Bowls. It's better than everything in the world, that three-and-a-half-minute walk. What is going through your head Tyson, Holyfield, three minutes left, walking in the ring. Anxiety, nerves? No, you know what it is? Um, when I hear, when I hear uh, Chase Those Crazy Ballads by Bob Marley, it kind of relaxes me. And, you know, I take my time going to the ring. Uh, it's always interesting when I'm watching a fight, watching one of my fights where I'm walking into the ring and watching my opponent. He's like, he hears the music and he's like, where is he? He's taking a long time, and it really does my opponent in when I take that long time to get to the ring. So it's a three-minute walk. I'll make it a five-minute walk. Hardest you were ever hit. Oh man! In a ring. Oh, Tyson, I'm glad you said in the ring. You know, because I was gonna. I was just thinking, when did my mom hit me the last? You know what I mean? <laughs> Tyson got one good pop on you. Yeah. Uh, and it may have been the seventh round. Yeah. You you were getting on to Tyson. If I recall, he hit you with a left or an uppercut. 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 Yeah, but See, I'm, I'm good with boxing. I can remember. Listen, I'm tall. I'm tall already, so my chin didn't have to go that far. It's like, okay, hit yeah. me with uppercut. Yeah, but he, if I was way, shorter, you know, that would have been a big uppercut. That, my head would have moved. That's how he knocked out Buster Douglas. Yeah. Remember, Buster dominated the fight. Yeah. When you were watching Buster and Tyson, you must, that must have given you great confidence because you were a much better fighter than Buster. Yeah. So when you were watching them in Tokyo, my interpretation is you're watching that thinking, this, I'm, I'm a better version of Buster. Yeah, I am. I mean, you know, when you watch those type of fights, you never know what each fighter's doing. You know, you hear Buster, he's, he's, his mother uh, passed away, so he's got that mental issue. You know, he, you know this fight's for his, his family, for his mother, just, just died. So that's a lot of power he's going into the ring with. 
Then you got Tyson. You don't know what he's been doing the night before, or <laughs> or how what his training discipline was, or yes. all these different things. All we see is the end result of this, and the end result was him obviously lo losing. And then we hear about the stories after. Yeah, that's a big part of boxing. It is. Muhammad Ali didn't go into the ring in great shape in every fight. No. There, there. But when when he went up against Joe Frazier. He was in great shape. Lennox Lewis here, three-time champ. Absolute pleasure. By the way, this Saturday on Fox, world featherweight champ Leo Santa Cruz versus Rafael Rivera. Uh, it's been an honor. I watched you multiple times. Uh, the refined, people didn't appreciate you till late, but your record was 42. Was it 42? 41, 2 and 1, 32 knockouts, multiple time fighter of the year, Lennox. Absolute pleasure. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks for having me. Uh, Lennox Lewis, Boxing Saturday on Fox. Thank you for watching. Well, if you enjoyed that clip, make sure you click uh, somewhere around here and subscribe from Fight Highlights to exclusive interviews. We have got everything you need as a boxing fan right here on PBC on Fox.